Welcome to what is going to be one of easily the best, I, I think, one of the best shows with WWE all year. How you guys like the layout? How do I sound? Do I look good? Do I sound good? Most importantly, are you guys having yourselves a good WrestleMania day? By the way, let me go ahead and fix this really quickly. The live chat should be live. There it is. Please give a round of applause to the man who made this amazing, an absolute amazing live stream cover. His name is It's J Knox or J Knox. <laughs> round of applause for everybody. It looks great. Real talk, I'm blown away by how good this looks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, J Knox, for the animated cover. Ladies and gentlemen, your thoughts and your opinions will be seen throughout the entire stream. So please share away. I'll be reading everything. Everything? Everything. Kalia, we'll get to you in a second. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to my review. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest when it comes to night one of WrestleMania 40. I'm going to be blunt with you. I went into this show with the utmost excitement. Oh, the build to this show, I've said multiple times, is one of the best builds for any WrestleMania, at least in the last 10 years. The Rock coming in, being the final boss, whipping Cody Rose's ass not once but twice, making him bleed. Telling Mama Rhodes, I'm going to take your son's blood. I'm going to wipe it on this belt. And then at WrestleMania, I'm going to put your tears on this belt. And he's a man of his word. He did all of it. He did all of it, ladies and gentlemen. You'd love to see it. But not just because of The Rock, but because of a lot of other matches going into it. To be honest with you, the main one is the storyline with Cody Rhodes. Finishing the story with The Rock, the final boss being the ultimate villain in his way, stopping him from conquering Roman Reigns. But my excitement going into WrestleMania was higher than usual. And so because of my excitement, and it being in Philadelphia, a place we've all agreed is home to one of the most rowdiest, wildest fans in professional wrestling history. I'm thinking, oh, this show is going to be crazy. This show is going to be wild. So you have to understand, with that excitement comes high expectations. And so when you expect the show to be great, to awesome, to fantastic, and you get a show that's solid, top, top, Quality, good. At best, it's good. But it's solid. It's not terrible. It's just fine. It got the job done. You had, you had some great matches in there. For the most part, the matches... The match quality, I feel like, from match number one to the main event, overall was a good show when it comes to the in-ring product. Give credit where credit is due. The in-ring product, I thought, was pretty good. That being said, and I talked about this on my social medias, not just Twitter, but also Facebook, I can't be the only one that felt something was missing. Something was missing from night one. I don't know what it was. It just felt like WrestleMania, at least for night one, was off. And I had to ask myself, okay, what is it? Could it be the crowd? They had 75,000 fans live. It sounded like they had 3,000. Simply because of the acoustics. And that's going to happen. When you have an open dome stadium, the sound just kind of goes all over the place, right? 
But even with that many people and it being where it is, it sounded like Philadelphia was not into the show until the main event, or at least the last two matches. It sounded dead. It sounded dead. People there live, I've gotten people messaging me saying that the crowd is passionate. Their section was loud. But regardless, it didn't come across like that on TV. It sounded dead. So I said to myself, was it the crowd? Was it production? I thought production overall was pretty good. I will say... The the overall lighting of the show was, I don't know. Anyone else just kind of felt it was dreary, dreary, kind of dark. Usually the, and this is just how I feel, the WrestleMania uh, stage lighting, the acoustics, the the overall scheme of, the, the theme of the show, very, very bright, very exuberant, very, you know, it, it's the Super Bowl. It's almost their Oscars. So, big lights Hollywood, right? I didn't get that feeling. I didn't get that feeling with tonight's show. It just felt very dreary. You know what I mean? I don't know. And I, I will say this too. As much as I liked Overall, I like the show. Good good show in terms of in-ring action. Other than two matches, honestly, one match, but I'll I'll give Sami Zayn and Guther its credit as well. The other five matches on this card, they were good, but not WrestleMania good. You get me? So, like, to this day, I still say, and I'm probably going to make it my pay-per-view of the year when it comes time for it. And we got, we still got a couple of months until December. But as of right now, the pay-per-view of the year is AEW's Revolution, where Sting retired in Greensboro. One of the greatest shows I've seen on pay-per-view when it comes to wrestling. And so when you have... When you have that quality and you follow it up with this, you're always going to be comparing it to, well, this is what I saw. This is what I paid 50 bucks for. Now, I didn't pay 50 bucks for WrestleMania, but I have a feeling if it wasn't on Peacock, I'd be paying 50 or 60 bucks for both nights, regardless of how you see it. When you're comparing it to different shows and you're seeing how good the quality can be and you hear WrestleMania is the grandest stage of them all. This is the place where heroes become legends. You expect the best of everything, the best of characters, the best of storylines, uh, where everything just comes to a head and we get conclusions to certain stories and the best the best wrestling literally all, all year. I, I believe... In terms of wrestling quality, at least for night one, I wouldn't even put this show in my top ten. Again, night one, the way it is right now, I could I could change my mind when we get to night two. Night two might be an extravagant show. That's one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. And next thing you know, um, of course... <clears throat> Sorry. Next thing you know, I could turn around and be like, God damn, like, overall, these, although night one wasn't all that great, night two completely blew my expectations, and then overall, I'll be saying WrestleMania 40 is one of the greatest of all time. But as of right now, WrestleMania 40, in terms of an overall show, is it even going to be in my top 10? Does that mean the show is terrible? No. It's a good show. Night two might surprise me, but night one was it was good. It was good. I do have my thoughts on the matches. I do feel like there's a lot to talk about. 
I do feel like we reached a point where WWE is hot, and because it's on a, a streak of selling out shows and the hype is real with The Rock coming in, the start of a new era, Vince being gone, Triple H getting the pencil, the, the temptation is to immediately say everything's fantastic, everything is awesome. But we also have to consider the fact that, yeah, we are fans, we're invested. How would this show be viewed by someone who doesn't watch wrestling, by someone who's not even like someone who's never seen wrestling before, but like a casual viewer? And I try to keep that in mind when I'm doing these reviews. I want to be fair. You get me? So putting my hype aside, overall, night one, good show. Best match by far, my personal opinion, was the main event. The Rock, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. I thought The Rock looked. This is my opinion. Y'all can feel differently. I thought he looked fantastic. Now, the match went a long time. Over, four, what, 45 minutes? For the record, just so we're clear. Just so we are clear for the record. I didn't even expect the match to go that long. Let alone a match with The Rock. When was the last time The Rock wrestled for 45 minutes? It's been a while. That's a long match. Even for, not even just for his age. If he would have wrestled that long in his 30s and 20s, I'd be like, that's a long-ass match. But Jesus Christ, over 40 minutes. And my interest never waned. My interest never waned. I was invested the entire time. And I'm getting word here from We Are Pro Wrestling that the match was 44 minutes and 30 seconds. If I'm not mistaken... That's the second longest match in WrestleMania history. Second to the Iron Man match between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. You would have to go back to 1996 to find a match longer than this one. One of the longest matches in WrestleMania history is one of the best. Actually, no, I'm being told that um, the last match he wrestled 45 minutes was the Iron Man match against Triple H in 2000. That was Judgment Day. Thank you very much. The Judgment Day, not Judgment Day as you know it. Not the group Judgment Day, the pay-per-view Judgment Day from 2000. You're absolutely right. Wow. You would have to go all the way back to the year 2000. That was the match of the night. Fantastic match. And as you would, as we all expected, as I predicted, in my predictions, we all knew that the bloodline was gonna have to win night one for us to get for us to get to Avengers Endgame, we had to have Avengers Infinity War. And if you've seen Avengers Infinity War, which you have, because everybody's seen it, it's one of the most viewed movies of all time, both of them back to back. Avengers Infinity War, Thanos won. He wiped out half the universe. And then in the second movie, Captain America ended up, well, with the Avengers, conquering Thanos. Thanks to Iron Man's, I am Iron Man. Well, we just got Infinity War tonight. And I know the Cody cry babies. is, oh my God, Cody lost. Oh my God, it's over. There's no way. Here's what I want you to do. If you're the type of fan that's, having anxiety attacks that's losing your mind over seeing Cody lose this tag match, follow me. <sighs> Inhale. And let it out. Inhale. And let it out. You want to know why we're doing that? Because I want you to realize something. They pretty much guaranteed you that Cody tomorrow night will finish his story. Cody is going to win that championship tomorrow. This is the perfect scenario. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to be, I think tomorrow night's match will probably be even longer. 
if you catch my drift. But, man, I, um, as soon as I saw Cody get pinned, I said, oh, oh, yeah, yep, mm, yep, okay. See, in my predictions, I had Seth Rollins getting pinned. No, they went all the way and had Cody get pinned by The Rock. So The Rock whooped his ass, not once but twice, on Raw, and then pinned him at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, he's winning that championship. You want to know why he's winning that championship? Because now you have to sell for Rock and Cody Rose at SummerSlam. Where The Rock will lose, by the way. But, yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I got a feeling. woo That tonight's going to be a good night. I have a feeling that you're going to get everything that you want and more. Trust me. Your boy Cody Rose will finish his story. I guarantee it. It's gonna be a great night tomorrow. I actually think you know what? The more I, the more I think about it, and the more I'm talking about WrestleMania, I think WrestleMania Night One was deliberately set to be a little bit more slower, a little bit more dreary on purpose, because tomorrow night. That's when the magic happens. That's when we get to WrestleMania. That's when we're going to get into the, the returns and the surprises and get all that stuff that we usually get. Because we got Drew and Seth tomorrow with CM Punk on commentary. The main event's going to be overbooked galore with Cody and Roman and then Rock and Jimmy Uso. And blah, 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 blah. It's going to be all that. It's going to be all that. And then we still got Bailey and EO Sky, which is going to be a fantastic match. Can't wait for that one. That's one of the matches I'm looking forward to. Yeah, man, I, I think when you stop and think about it, I think Night 2 is actually going to kick a lot of ass. And this was like the pre-show, although it's not the pre-show, the pre-show to the real WrestleMania, which is going to be Night 2. So, I'm excited. I'm excited for Night 2. I'm not mad. At night one. Good show. Did it feel like WrestleMania? No. Could it have been better? Absolutely. Are there things to hate about it, to not like about it? 1,000%. It's not a perfect show. But it is a good show. If you disagree, let me know. In the live chat. Because you are now getting screen time. So you're in the live chat. But also in the comments if you're watching me afterwards. So... We are going to go ahead and get to the sponsorship, the preliminary stuff, plugs. Say hello to the live chat. You're going to get your, you're going to get your name shouted out. And then we're going to get to the actual review of the broadcast. Thank you all so much for being here. You could be anywhere for your WrestleMania review. Some of you are watching other content creators and you'll watch me after the fact. Whenever, wherever you're watching me, thank you for making me a part of your day. But... If this is the first time you're watching me, do me a solid favor. Like the video, subscribe, and click that bell to catch all my content when it comes out. Wow, your edits help expand the brand by doing the following things. Join the membership. Click that join button and get the opportunity to request a video of your choosing, whether it's a live reaction, a hot topic, or a review, past, present, or future. Also, don't forget to give thanks. Hit that super thanks if you would like to donate after the fact. You can. Also, let me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, just Alex Central. Give me a follow on Instagram. Give me a follow on Spotify. Give me a follow on Cameo. Give me a follow on Threads. And most importantly, give me a follow on TikTok. For I am the tickets of the talkest. Donate using PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, Venmo. And yes, Super Chats are officially on you. You can donate at any point in time during the broadcast to get your thoughts played live on the air. Also, the Discord is open. Continue the conversation on our Discord. Help us get to 300 followers. No, you can do it. Email me at just alex'sworld at gmail.com for business inquiries just to say hi. And please get yourself a t shirt today at Pro and Tees and Teespring. Get you an old school Alex t shirt. Get you a new school Alex's World t shirt. But most importantly, get you a blonde hair, blue eyes, apple pie. My, 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 very good. The remix t shirt made by it's J Knox and Firestar Heart. All this down below in the description box. This weekend sponsor is a special one as you guys know about my story when it comes to identity theft sometime last year around my birthday i found out that a family member stole my identity he used 
my information, my name, to purchase unwarranted, unsolicited accounts, uh, credit card accounts, car loans, house loans, rent, utilities, completely, completely killed my credit. And you have to understand something. When you're on the internet, when you're putting yourself on the internet like me, you're, you're practically making yourself a target. And there's so much out there that could ruin your experience, from scams to data brokers to hackers. It's almost imperative that you have protection. And I think today's sponsor, tonight's sponsor, is a great one for all of you. So let's get a quick word from him, and then we'll get to some shut, 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 shout out. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. Being a victim of identity theft, I know all too well about the feeling of being at the mercy of hackers and scammers and being powerless to combat the growing threat of scams and data brokers with the world moving more and more towards social media. Anytime a data broker gets your information, they sell it to scammers, spammers, and anyone who may want to target you, your relatives, and your friends. This is where Aura comes in. Aura is an identity theft protection program that shows you which data brokers are selling your information and automatically submits opt-out requests for you. It even searches the dark web for potential email and password leaks. This will allow you to make necessary changes and get ahead of the scammers. Nowadays, it is imperative to constantly monitor and clean up your information, and not just you, but your friends and your family as well. You get access to other features like antivirus malware protection, password management, identity theft insurance. It's easy to set up and you get everything for one affordable price. So today, if you go to Aura.com Just Alex, you can get started with a two-week free trial, also linked down below in the description. I've used it for a short period of time, and I can say for myself, it is definitely a must-have for all social media users. You never know who is looking to steal your identity. Get control of your internet experience with Aura today. Thank you all so much for being here. Please show your love to the moderators. Ultra, Shout Night, Seven Fire Star Heart, Elias, Ademi, New Japan Pro Wrestling Girl, Khalil does everything, 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 and Big MGM because they help keep this a safe space for wrestling fans like you. We would not have a safe space if it wasn't for the moderators. Show your love to the moderators. And most importantly, show your love to It's J Knox for the amazing cover that you saw earlier. One of the best covers I've seen for my channel. I am blessed to have the people these wonderful people in my circle. Also, like I said before, it is imperative that you guys like the video. Not as imperative as you guys get the sponsorship. But most importantly, it is imperative that you like the video because the more you like the video, the more opportunities I will be giving to be recommended here on YouTube. So help, please, bye 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 boost that algorithm by hitting that like button. And yes, as a reminder, the Super Chat Championship is on the line for both night one and night two. So let me explain how this is going to work. The title is being defended over two nights. So whoever donates the most, not just tonight, but also tomorrow night, in total, will be the Super Chat champion. I will have to keep note and keep track of everyone's donations and the amount they donated. And whoever donates the most will be the Super Chat champion by the end of tomorrow night so check this out tonight someone can donate five hundred dollars not saying you're gonna do it and then all of a sudden tomorrow night someone decides to show up and donate a thousand dollars guess who wins the guy that donates a thousand dollars unless the guy that donated five hundred dollars also donates a thousand dollars and then his total from 500 tonight will then add up to the thousands of dollars tomorrow night and then he'll win so essentially, the total of both nights, that guy, woman, or guy, will be your new Super Chat champion. And I will say this, Nickname Mai has had an iron grip on that championship. So unless he wants to give it up, good luck. So yes, let's go ahead and play these Super Chats while we are here in the building.
Round one begins. Already seeing people saying Cody looked weak lol. Lord have mercy. Because he lost. Again, it's Infinity War. Don't worry. Infinity War is all set up for, for Endgame. Captain America needed help. He needed help. Wow. <laughs> Night one was fine, but I thought I saw real lighting in the background of one of the first matches. But overall night one was okay, and D is the new DX. DIY is the new DX. I did love their entrance. Paying homage to DX, by the way. That was really, really cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll have a lot to say about that tag match, too. People aren't talking about it as much as they should be. I thought it was a great match. I had a lot of fun. I need The show was definitely solid. Things I can say would be some matches should have been a little longer like Jimmy and Jay's match. The main event did went too long and not gonna lie dragged a little bit. We're gonna have a lot to say about that Jimmy and Jay match because a lot of people are in not happy about it at all for whatever reason for whatever reason. n2 will be night of extreme with two extreme matches ah again i i just feel like tonight's show was the the pre-show to the real wrestlemania it was like the again Part one to the big part two finale. I have a feeling night two is going to be a lot better. It just feels that way. Once again, do I sound okay? Seth wins Damien Cash's and Seth turns heel on Raw. Really? Seth wins, Damian cashes in, Seth turns heel on Raw against Cody, and we do Cody and Seth. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Not, not, not gonna be mad at that. Ready for chaos. Enter Cena and Stone Cold. Oh, you expect them to show up tomorrow night? Oh, that's going to be fun. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I guess people are starting off light with the Super Chats. Smart, because it's a two-night ordeal. I think you're playing your money very closely just to see what would happen, because you know that there are some sharks in these waters. And they are ready to really get the kick in. Get their, get their shit in, you know what I mean. So, as of right now, with the donations we have, Omar Feliciano is in the league with $10. And this is literally like round one of maybe, I'll do another one at the end of the stream, maybe one in the middle, depends on who shows up. And then we're going to do another one tomorrow. So, keep that in mind. You got two nights to donate. You don't have to throw all your shit in one night. But if you wanted to, I'm not going to stop you. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? I got you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get these shout outs in that we can get to the actual. Review. Thank you all so much for being here. Hello to the following. We got your goatness, Lauren Biggs. We got John. We got Debit. Money, 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 money. Debit Money Adams. We got Highway Dealing. Danger. Danger. Yeah. Dealing Danger. I see JJ, who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the dogs out? JJ Bulldog giving me a shout out from Philadelphia. I'm assuming he was there live for WrestleMania. Let us know how it was, man. Give us the full experience and I'll be happy to read it. We are Pro Wrestling, very underrated YouTube content creator. will be giving us some facts 
throughout the night, and I will be reading what he has to say. I love when he give us the the breakdown of this day in wrestling, and he's literally a, a connoisseur of wrestling history, and he's coming with the facts tonight, so I appreciate that, sir. Muhammad Noor, I also see Chemo Embryo, Angel, um, Moss, is it Moss or Moss? Moss. Moss Scott. Hopefully I said your name right. The Bulldog Show. Anthony A. John Bill of the Second. Sunset Jaden. Jason Lewis. Amarola 408. Latrell Finkton. Good to have you here, sir. Of course, we're seeing a lot of people in the live chat. You love to see it. You're going to be seeing the live chat a lot. We got the Nature Boy, Joe DeBannon. Woo! What's good, Joe? Yeah. I always like seeing you that way. Mr. Taryn Jones in the his house. Mr. Shadow Star. First Love, that's a new one. How you doing, First Love? King Gamer Worldwide, Sean Vassell de Gaulle. Is it Vassal de Gaulle or Vassell? I think it's Vassal de Gaulle. I'm gonna go with that. Ed Young. Ooh, I'm gonna pass up a lot of names here. I'm so sorry. If I miss your name, guys, I'm really just trying to skim through everybody's name here. Um, Ethan Zarkarabak. Good to have you here, sir. And we're gonna end it. We're gonna end it with da 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 da. It's yo Pink Panther. Thank you all so much for being here. If I don't say your name, do not be offended. We have a lot, a lot to get to, and a long show ahead. So let's go ahead and not waste any time. You guys are ready for your WrestleMania review. I I thought. I thought, for the most part, the show opened up very strong with two very, very strong, very fast-paced matches. And this is just my opinion. People could disagree because I know a lot of people had some... They was feeling some kind of way about a few of these matches. And I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you didn't have a right to feel that way because I gets it. I understand 1,000%. But, again, you come from my review. I have my perspective. You're going to hear a lot of content creators say things differently. And it's up to you to decide who you trust in for your quality, for your review of a show. The show started off strong. Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. Their interests, both of their interests was great. You have Becky Lynch reciting passages from her memoir, her new book that is released that's currently out. And then you see her getting the the big time cinematic WWE graphic department doing her thing with the books over the screen. They're reading her text. And then there's a door that opens inside the book and she walks out through it. It's really cool. And the crowd's receiving her with booze. Surprisingly, they're receiving her with booze, and she's the babyface in this feud. I have to question that now. And then Rhea Ripley got song serenaded to the ring by the people who did her song, uh, Brutality. Forgot the name of the band, but it was a live band performance of Brutality. She came out, long hair, dark hair, Rhea Ripley looking fine. And I said to myself, look here, if she wasn't a babyface before, she a babyface now. She's a babyface now. There's no way in hell you can have her do that entrance looking that good, that good, and not be a babyface. So, overall, good match. Not even good. Great match. Fast paced, didn't slow down one bit. They beat the piss out of each other. Becky Lynch hitting all her best spots. Top rope guillotine leg drops. You had a lot of manhandle slams. One regular one, one off the top rope. Rhea Ripley kicking out both of them because it's Rhea Ripley. And Rhea Ripley was giving it to Becky. And this is the thing about both of these women. When it's WrestleMania time, when it's time to put their best foot forward, they always put their best foot forward. They don't half-ass anything. 
And there was a lot of stiff shots in this match. And to me, the drama here was already built into it. Becky Lynch is going into the match, not 100%. And Rhea Ripley is at 100%. And so you're thinking, all right, well, is Rhea going to be cocky? What's the story going to be here leading into this match? And ultimately, I'm just going to be honest with you. As good as that story was, it didn't quite play into the finish. Yes, Becky Lynch did kick out of a riptide, which I thought was interesting. And the match picked up the moment Becky Lynch kicked out of their riptide. I just personally feel like they could have done a little bit more to play into the fact that Becky Lynch was coming in with bruises and broken bones, not at 100%. And they even talked about how Becky Lynch was sick. Apparently, she had a degree, uh, she was at 102 degree fever. She had a fever of 102. So she was sick, strep throat and everything. She wasn't, she wasn't doing pretty well. But she went in there and performed like nothing was going on with her. She pulled a Michael Jordan with the flu or food poisoning. When Rhea beat her, and it wasn't one of those screwy finishes. No, she straight up beat Becky Lynch. She pinned her. One, two, three. I said to myself, you know, for a storyline where they were building it as Becky Lynch was just kind of, how do I put this? She was just kind of, let's just say not at 100%. They told us that she's not going into the match 100%. I would think they would do something a little bit more to subvert our expectations. They didn't. They told us Becky's going into the match not 100%, so the expectation is Rhea Ripley will win. And Rhea just won. And so for me, I'm not saying the storyline didn't play into it, but it just kind of felt pointless to do all of that. To have Becky go through hell hell and high water to get to this match. And in my predictions, I said, you know, because she's going through all of this, I have a feeling that she's going to win. For her to just go to WrestleMania and lose, it was just kind of like, that, really? That, that's, that's what we gonna do? That's how we're doing it? You're just gonna come and lose? Okay. I don't hate it. It's just, it's just one of those things where I have to take a step back and go, was that the right way to go about things? And one of my biggest fears, my biggest issues with Rhea Ripley having this title reign and her being this dominant is that, okay, who's going to beat her? Are there women on the WWE roster that can beat her? Yes, Jay Cargill. Of course, Bianca Belair comes to mind as well. But when it comes to the Raw roster, as it is right now, there isn't really anybody in the women's division who can believably beat Rhea Ripley. And I think what it's done is created a title reign that's not very memorable. Because everybody else is down here, and Rhea's all the way up here. Rhea has victories over men. That's how dominant she's been. So that should tell you something. I don't know. I just personally feel like we reached a point with Rhea where she's outgrown the women's division. And she should be competing for men's championships. But because she's so overbooked and so strong, and I'm not even complaining about the fact that she's overbooked to all to all hell. I think she deserves it. I love her. But it's gotten to the point now where no one can believably beat her. And Becky just went in there and lost clean. So now what do you do? Now what do you do until you get to Bianca Belair or and or Jay Cargill? Well, that's a problem they'll have to face. I will say this, and then we'll move on. From this point forward, she is no longer a heel. I have stopped seeing her as a heel. In my eyes, Rhea Ripley is a babyface. The crowd reaction she got tonight, the fact that the fans booed Becky Lynch. They booed her. Let's me know that Rhea Ripley is that woman. She is her. We all said that Carmella Hayes is him. Rhea Ripley is her. 
Give me your thoughts about Rhea Ripley. I'm very curious to know how everyone feels about this match. Again, great match. Great way to open the show. I just have to question, like, okay, now what? Where do we go from here? Next match. The six-pack ladder match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. Before the match even starts, they show you the ring, and we see the championships separated. The Raw Tag Team titles on one side, the SmackDown Tag Team titles on both sides. As soon as I saw that, I went, yeah, we are separating the championships. We're going to have two tag team titles again on both shows. Great. I love it that way. And thank God. Uh, no offense to the undisputed championships or the championship reigns. I feel like when you have only one set of tag teams going between one show, it really doesn't open up opportunities, or, or two shows, excuse me, or multiple shows, not even one show. It's Raw, NXT, and SmackDown. Regardless, when that's happening, you don't really leave opportunities for other people to be seen or be put in that spotlight. So I am happy that we have officially separated the tag team titles yet again. Now, as for the winners, first off, let's talk about the match, the people in the match. We got the awesome truth. Everybody got short entrances to save time. But it was the awesome truth, our truth, the Miz, Judgment Day, the tag team champs, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, DIY coming out with a DX homage, paying homage to DX. That's, of course, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. The New Day, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods. Consequence Creed made an appearance. That's Xavier Woods' is, um previous character before he came to WWE he, he was Consequences Creed in TNA but he wore the Consequences Creed gear that was great Austin Theory and Grayson Walla and then New Catch Republic which is of course Peter Dunn Pete Dunn and everyone's favorite big strong boy Tyler Bate this match from Jump Street was chaos they all got outside the ring grabbed ladders crazy spots all kinds of high flying. Love the spot where I think it was Finn Balor. Finn Balor was holding a ladder. Tyler Bate picked him up with the ladder in hand and then did an airplane spin with the ladder. You know that spot where you put the ladder on your neck and you just go spinning and people just run into it? Well, instead of that, it was an airplane spin with the ladder. Kofi Kingston got hit with it and that was it. I think they dropped it and said, fuck it. This is this is this is a little too much. And then they just finished the airplane, <laughs> the airplane spin. People falling off ladders here and there. Freaking Grayson Waller got powerbombed through a ladder after him and Austin Theory grabbed the SmackDown titles. So congratulations to your new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Good to have them here. Good to see you guys killing it. Now, I've always said that as much as they put a lot of stock into Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, it just feels like it, it just, it doesn't feel like we're getting a return on this investment. Now, Austin Theory is 26. Who knows where he'll be in the next 10 years? But damn, he beat John Cena last year and nothing came of it. Now he's winning the tag team titles this year. Now it's like, okay, eventually we need to see a return on this investment on Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. But they're the new tag team champs. I'm assuming they're going to carry the tag team division on SmackDown. They kind of have to. Johnny Gargano, this was one of my favorite spots, did a slingshot DDT, a final beat DDT to the outside with Peter Dunn and put him through a table. And then freaking Tommaso Ciampa did an air raid crash, an air raid crash off the ladder with Tyler Bate it looked like he broke his back. Not Tyler's back. Not just his back, but also freaking Tommaso Ciampa's back. He broke his own back hitting that move. Jesus Christ Almighty. I was very surprised that we didn't see a lot of spots from Kofi. You would think Kofi Kingston would be all over this match. You know, he's very subdued. Everyone else just kind of think that Kofi Kingston has fallen into the background. Not much is happening with him. I don't know how I feel about that. But okay, I mean, it is what it is. 
the ending came, and this is one of my favorite parts. Easily the the hottest part of the match, whereas when The Miz was getting beat up by Ju Judgment Day, that's Damian Priest and Finn Balor, and then R-Truth, who thinks it's an actual tag match, gets in the apron, and he's like, tag me! Tag me, player! Player, player, player! Miz tags him, although there's no tags in this match. Crowd pops because he got the hot tag. He does the John Cena, sure tackle, sure tackle. Spinning power bomb, you can't see me. Five knuckle shuffle, boom. Hits the attitude adjustment and pins Finn Balor, one, two, three. This is like, bruh, it's not an actual tag match. Come up the ladder. It was great. Great, great moment. The scariest part to me was, at the end, you see our troops climbing a ladder, right? He's climbing a ladder. And I think Damian Priest gets on a different, he gets on the other side. And then something happens to the leg of the ladder. It bends. Like, it completely bends. And now, the, now the ladder is wobbling, right? And so our troops gets tossed off the ladder. He falls off. Now Damian Priest is climbing the ladder. And the referee's like, yo, Damien, don't climb that ladder. Bro, get a different ladder. They're trying to get his attention. Damien, get a different ladder. And he's like, what do y'all want? Yo, I'm, I'm wrestling right now. Right? And you're like, oh, shoot, Damien, Damien. Bro, you're, you're going to hurt yourself. And this is the part where even I'm just kind of going, bro, please be careful. Please be careful. You're, you are going to hurt yourself. This is very dangerous. And I I, I I personally feel like, again, this is just how I feel. If if they had gone through with whatever spot they were going to do, someone was going to be seriously hurt. So I'm so happy that when Damian Priest is climbing this ladder and it's wobbling, Miz climbs the other side and they're brawling, someone said, okay, we're gonna, we are going to kill this spot. They jumped off. And then Damian Priest just tossed the ladder and grabbed a new one. And the, the referees essentially just gave him a new ladder. They just gave him a new ladder. Our truth got the ladder in there. And I'm just like, oh my God. They they be in commentary, played it off like, yo, he's he still thinks he's part of the judgment day, right? So the ladder gets inside the ring, and then they do the usual spot. Damian Priest climbs the ladder, he gets tossed off. And then our truth climbs the ladder and gets the raw titles. Our truth. And The Miz, The Awesome Truth, are now your new Raw Tag Team Champs. R-Truth finally gets his WrestleMania moment. He finally wins a match at WrestleMania. Something that's been eluding him. It's been eluding him for years. He finally gets it. I'm happy. I'm happy that R-Truth got his moment at WrestleMania. It was a great moment for him. He deserved it. And yeah, we're we're gonna see where that goes. Um, the tag team division still needs a little work. I'm not the only one that feels this way, right? The division as a whole still feels kind of not just the men's but the women's as well. Tag teams aren't as prominent, prominently featured in WWE right now, and I'm hoping over time that does change. That does change. So, I thought the first two matches, Becky, Rhea, this tag team ladder match, great matches. Great matches. And then we get to the rest of the card. And th this is when things just kind of start to fall off a little bit. I sensed it in this next match. So, what was originally Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio Ended up being Andrade and Rey Mysterio because Dragon Lee got attacked by Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. So Andrade gets added literally last night, the night before WrestleMania 40, night one. And they start wrestling. And I noticed that the crowd was a lot quieter. And honestly, this is where I just kind of chalked it up to acoustics. I'm like, you know what? We're in a big building. It's 72,000. There's an open dome. So the sound travels out. It doesn't travel circular. It's not going throughout the arena. It's pushing upward, pushing off, out, 
out of the arena, you know? So it's going to be hard to hear the crowd. That's what I chalked it up as. The more I think about it, the more I just kind of go, is it just that or is it just that this match wasn't clicking? Because I'm not going to lie. When I was watching this match, I was just sitting there just kind of waiting for something to happen. And I'm just sitting here and I told myself, why does this match have literally no heat? It has no heat, which is incredible when you think about it because this entire storyline with Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio has been building for it feels like six to seven months. Remember, Santos took Rey out last year after that U.S. title tournament, right? And then he turned heel and then Rey came back and there's supposed to be this big feud, this big heat behind it. No heat. And so they added Dominic Mysterio. And I'm thinking, okay, that makes it a little bit more interesting. We get to the match tonight, no heat. None. And then to make matters worse, and this is just my opinion, they had Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar lose because some football players from the Philadelphia Eagles with Rey Mysterio mass, I think one of them was Jason Kelsey and the other one was some other dude. But football players from the Philadelphia Eagles interfere to help Ray and Andrade win. And I'm just sitting here like, really? That That's how you end this match? I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say, I personally feel like Dom and Santos should have won this match. I feel like Dom should have won it. Kept the heat going. Keep their heat. And then we could have done something at Backlash or something. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just... It wasn't one of those matches where I came out going, damn, I want to see more of this. When it was over, I was like, are we sure we want to continue this? I don't know. This was when I, This is when I started to sense that something was off with the show. Was the match bad? No, I still... I thought the match was good. Like, the, the in-ring performance, the in-ring quality, I thought was good. People were telling me that the other player was Lane Johnson, whoever the hell Lane Johnson is, but okay. Lane Johnson. Regardless, I just, I just personally felt like the match, it was missing something. By the time it was over with, I was like, that's it. This is a story that's been brewing, uh, cooking, sizzling, for seven months. And it's like an afterthought. The LWO versus Legado de Fantasma just feels so cold. And coming out of this match, it still feels cold. Feels very cold. But Rey Mysterio and Andrade won. So there's that. And then the match that people are calling the worst match of the night. Although I personally disagree. Technically, I, I think this, this tag match is the worst match of the night. But people are saying Jimmy and Jey Uso had the worst match of the entire night. And this is a storyline that's been, oh my God, like, come on now. The Usos have been together since they debuted. They've been the Uso since, what, 2010? 14, probably 15 years, if we're being honest. But 14 years when it comes to the main roster. Bloodline storyline, we know how that worked out. Jay ends up leaving the bloodline. Jimmy leaves with them at first, but then rejoins the bloodline, screws over Jay at SummerSlam. And since then, we've been building and building and adding heat and having Jimmy screw over Jay Uso every chance he could. Building to this match for WrestleMania, right? I remember saying, when when Jimmy screwed Jay at SummerSlam, I said, okay, but why? Right? Like, Jimmy's the one that encouraged Jay to, to leave the bloodline. And so for him to just turn around and join back up with Roman... After Jimmy got his ass kicked and taken out by Roman, I was just sitting here like, why would you, why would you do that? And so I was hoping 
in these next seven months, they were going to add a little bit more to Jimmy Uso's character, right? And in the meantime, Jay's going to go do his own thing on Raw. Jay ends up becoming one of the hottest babyface talents in all of wrestling, if not one of the highest wrestlers, period, today. His entrance when he comes out, by the way, he came out with Lil Wayne. He came out with Lil Weezy. Lil Wayne, Amelie, 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 leaning into his theme song, raised the roof and everything. It was a great entrance. High entrance. As over as Jay Uso is, Jimmy Uso is literally the complete opposite. Jimmy has looked like shit. The build to this match has been so lopsided. Simply from the standpoint of Jimmy has looked like absolute garbage. No heat on him whatsoever. The only heat he got was screwing Jay Uso out of his matches that were sporadically spread out throughout the last seven months. No, I take that back. Eight months. And so going into this match, you had heat, but not a lot of heat. The only heat you had was, well, it's the first time these two are fighting. They haven't had a match before against each other. This is the first, the very first time they've wrestled each other, right? And so in my mind, I'm thinking, well, Jimmy has to win, right? Because he literally has nothing. Literally nothing. There's no heat whatsoever other than him screwing Jey Uso out of a couple of championships. Okay. But in terms of, like, momentum and standing out as a believable challenger for Jay, he has zero. He has nothing. And so for me, I thought it was obvious. Because in the predictions with A&B Convos, Wrestling Edition, and Patrick, when we were talking about it, they picked Jay. Everyone picked Jay. And I said to myself, yep, and that's why I'm picking Jimmy. This is the perfect match to subvert expectations. Jimmy Uso should have won this. He didn't. He didn't. Jay just won. There was no interference from Solo, no bloodline shenanigans. It was just a regular good Good, but at the end of the day, it was just a regular one-on-one match where Jay just won. And my biggest issue with that is, this is literally a part of one of the biggest storylines in the last, dare I say, two decades. Jay and Jimmy's feud has stemmed from the Tribal Chief storyline. A storyline that has spanned it for three years involving some of the biggest names. Cody, Rock, Seth, and I'm thinking, well, Sammy, Kevin Owens. And I'm thinking to myself, man, like, this is going to be a preview of what to expect for not just tonight's main event, but tomorrow's main event. I was expecting an interference. And for the first time, I'm thinking, where's the interference? Where's Solo? Why was he not out there to help? Jay just won. And Jimmy lost. And I think ultimately, because of the story they're telling, you look at that ending and go, what what, what the hell? What the hell? So what, that's it? You do all of that. Jimmy screws over Jay. We don't get an explanation for why he screwed over Jay other than I'm evil or family, right? Although Roman attacked him, and then he just goes on this losing streak, barely getting any heat other than the times where he screwed Jay Uso out of the tag out of the tag team titles, out of the US title, and then of course the IC title, and then the world title. You're sitting here like, okay, so this is a a mountain he has to conquer. I don't think he's going to conquer it in the first match. And so when Jay just beats him, you're like, well, that's just kind of lackluster. This goes beyond just having a good match. I just feel like the overall story is just, it it is just messy. I'm being honest with you. The, the overall story with the Usos, the Uso brothers, it's messy. 
And I think that's why people are saying it's one of the worst matches of the night because of the story behind it not really connecting. It is. It's a messy story that I feel needs more work unless we're moving away from it. I don't think we're moving away from it. I have a feeling that we're going to get more of it. This won't be the last time we see Jimmy and Jay together. And that's fine. But if they're going to continue wrestling, I really do think Jimmy and Jay need more. And needs more layers. Because they didn't really add any layers outside of Jimmy screwing Jay and him breaking up with him at SummerSlam. And that's as far as we got. We never really got an explanation for why Jimmy screwed Jay. And, and they just separated and then that was it. It was weird. But I think the overall in-ring quality of the match was good. It was good. Lots of super kicks. The story was off. And I'm going to say that. Like, a lot of people, especially WWE fans, they're in it for the story. If the story doesn't make any sense, you're, you're going to lose the audience. And I feel like the overall story here didn't really make much sense. So, Jay just beats Jimmy. And I'm assuming we're going to get more, but that could be it. I don't see why we need to go to a second match. There's no reason to go to a second match. Jay won. Well, the story continues. We'll find out what they do next. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Jay Cargill, Naomi, and Bianca, who are now being known as the Big Three, took on damage controls Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai came out with that leather on, and I said, God. Damn! Dakota Kai looking fine in her wrestling gear. Kyrie Sane looked amazing as well. Asuka did look good too. But Dakota, I said, look, if you want me that if you want me to marry you, that that that's a good that's a good way to go about it. Now Dakota Kai is single, right? I think she's single. Oh, she is single. Great. Wonderful. I loved the entrance. From Naomi, Bianca, and Jay Cargill. Looking like Charlie's Angle. Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angles. <laughs> Charlie's Angels. Destiny's Child coming down from what looked like a stage um, podium. They was just being lowered down from the heavens. You got the light shining behind them with the silhouette. I said, oh, Lord. Now you know they got to win now. With that entrance, I said, you know they got to win. So the big three got in there, and it was literally building to a hot tag from Jay Cargill. That's literally the entire match. Naomi and, of course, Bianca got heat on them from Asuka and Kyrie and Dakota Kai. They got their asses whooped until they got the hot tag on Jay Cargill, and it was game over. And Jay Cargill ran through them bitches, took them all out. Like storm. A storm is coming. And it came. Pause. She went in there. Big boot. Power pre power pressed. Yes, power pressed. Kyrie saying over her head through her outside the ring. Ended up hitting the jaded. That's the sit out face buster. On Dakota Kai and Pender. One, two, three. And unfortunately... Asuka's WrestleMania anti-Undertaker streak continues. That is her sixth consecutive loss at WrestleMania. We all called it. No one should be surprised. It is Jay Cargill's debut match. She was not losing this. The crowd was, again, it was one of those things where you chalk it up to the acoustics inside the arena, but the crowd was non-existent. They sounded dead. They sounded dead. It literally sounded like everybody was just, just knocked out. So, I don't know. I, by this point, I was just like, it's, it's just coming to the point where I'm just like, maybe, maybe we just need to wrap this up because this, this ain't it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. 
All right, the crowd's just not feeling it. And I, I hate to say it. I thought the match was good, too. The match was good. But I think people are, are just more invested in Bailey and EO Sky story. So I think that match tomorrow is going to be phenomenal. What me are calling the match of the night, or one of the matches of the night, was his IC title match. And I've had my criticisms about this match. I've gone on record to say this should be Chad Gable's spot. Sami Zayn, to me, didn't feel like the right person to be Gunther. And even now, although he did beat him, it still doesn't feel right. Does that mean Sami Zayn doesn't deserve this moment? Does that mean he shouldn't have this moment? Does that mean he can never have this moment? No. None of those things are what I was saying. I personally feel like this was Chad Gable's story. And because of the situations with CM Punk and Brock Lesnar, if that didn't happen, this would have been Chad Gable's moment. Gunther's reign was going to end at 666. I just don't like the fact that it was Sammy that did it. Just wanted to get that off my chest. With that said, putting my personal opinions, my personal bias aside for Chad Gable, because I'm proud to be an American and a big Chad Gable fan. Thank you. When Sammy Zayn was shown backstage with his family, his wife and his kid. And then he's going through Gorilla. And then he runs into Kevin Owens. Then he runs into Chad Gable. There was a side of me that was like, man, it would really suck if he lost right now. But I was like, you know what? I still think he's going to lose. I still think he's going to lose. Gunther comes out. Sammy comes out to huge, huge ovation. The match starts, and it goes exactly as you would expect. Gunther dominates Sammy. And I mean massacres him. Chops, suplex, German suplex, scoop slam, chop, another chop, sleeper. Sammy is getting his ass walked. It got to a point where it was uncomfortable. Gunther stepping on his neck. Sammy couldn't move, looking limp. And then Gunther hits him with not one, not two, but three splashes. And I said, okay, dude, Gunther, pin him. Pin him. Please pin him. Please. And they're showing his wife and the kid. And you're seeing they're distraught watching this. And so now... It starts to make you feel uncomfortable because Sammy's being punished. And there were multiple times during the match where Gunther could just pinned him. He didn't. Gunther just got cocky. Oh, I'm going to torch him a little bit more. And Sammy, seeing his family distraught, awoke something inside him. And so Sammy Zane got his second win, and then he starts fighting it. And he starts fighting it. And then he starts fighting it. And then Gunther is on the top rope, right? He gets a halluva kick to the face. Kicks out. And then, Sammy has go through on the top rope. Sammy climbs the top rope. Doesn't climb all the way. Gets to the second part. In my head, I said, I swear to God, if they have him do the brain buster, if they have him do the brain buster, I am going to lose my mind. So help me God. Sami Zayn picks up Gunther. Boom! Brain buster! He hit the top rope brain buster. I lost it. For like 10 seconds. I forget everything. I just basically told you about. I forget that. Wait, Sami Zayn should be winning this match. He hit the brain buster. He hit the brain buster. Gunther got up. He ate not one but two Aluva kicks. And Sami pins him. It all happened really quickly. It was brain buster, Aluva kick, Aluva kick, pinned him. Crowd went crazy. I went crazy. Cause it was like, what? What in the world? What? He hit I, I had to stop myself and go, oh, yeah, I forgot Vince McMahon's not here anymore. 
Vince is not here anymore, so Talon could be a little bit more free. Oh my God. Incredible. Incredible, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, you, you have to understand something. I still don't agree with having Sami Zayn beat Gunther. I still feel like it should have been Chad Gable's story. Let's get that straight. But I understand why. Now I understand why he won. Because I'm sitting here like, why Sami Zayn? They wanted to put over the Brain Buster spot. That's what this is about. This was more about establishing the Brain Buster. When he hit that top rope Brain Buster, it all became clear to me. Because I'm like, why? why? Of, all, of all people, of all people, to being good, why Sami Zayn? It wasn't about Sammy beating Guther. It was about one thing and one thing over. One thing. One thing only. Putting over the brain buster. He wanted to establish that top rope brain buster and give Sami Zayn that WrestleMania moment. That's what it was about. It was about that one move for that one moment. And honestly, thinking about it from that perspective, You know what? I get it. Because again, ultimately, the original plan was going to be Brock Lesnar and Guther. So I had to think, was Brock Lesnar going to end Guther's reign? Probably not. And so after that, I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be Chad Gable. Because originally, Sami Zayn was supposed to be fighting Drew McIntyre, right? When they lost Brock Lesnar, I'm like, okay, next in line is Chad Gable. Sami's going to be fighting for the world title, right? No. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. They went with Sami Zayn. And for the longest time, I was just like, why? Why Sami? Why Sami? It wasn't about Sami. It wasn't just about it. They wanted to establish... Ladies and gentlemen, it's a new era. Brain buster, top rope. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I, I was blown away. Just absolutely blown away by that. Yeah. You know what? Congratulations, Sami Zayn. I'm happy you got your WrestleMania moment. Uh, Guther's reign is over. He ends his reign at 666. Oh, my God. He ended it at the devil's number. 666 days. Yikes. That's kind of appropriate, though. That's pretty appropriate. He ended it at 666. So I guess that means Guther will go after the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, I have a feeling that... If Seth retains, I know exactly who's going to beat him. It's not going to be Drew. should be Drew. But if, if Seth does retain, I have a feeling Gunther is going to be your new world champion. Just got a feeling. I got a feeling. Woo-hoo. So, yeah, I'm conflicted. The match was awesome. Fantastic match overall. Great moment. Brain Buster is going to be... It's going to be one of those things that people talk about all weekend. Sammy hit the fucking Brain Buster. I could never imagine that happening under Vince McMahon. But yeah, he, he hit the freaking Brain Buster. On the top rope. That's his finisher now. That's insane. Okay. Congratulations, Sammy. Four-time IC champion. Four-time IC champion. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Let's see how it goes. And finally, we get the main event of the evening. A match that has huge implications for night two. The Rock and Roman Reigns. The Bloodline. 
taking down Cody Rose and Nathaniel Rollins. The Rock is the MVP of WrestleMania this year. I don't want to hear it. You heard me. And you know it's true. It's not Cody Rhodes. It's not Roman Reigns. It's not Seth Rollins. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the MVP for WrestleMania weekend. And you know it's true. The, the Rock single-handedly made this one of the most exciting WrestleMania shows, period. And the hype for this match was out of this world. The things they did with the final boss love this new gimmick. And I kept telling y'all, y'all over here, oh, The Rock don't guide no more. We're going to run The Rock off. We're going to boo him so he'll go away. I said, okay, you want to boo The Rock? You can boo The Rock, but understand this. He's going to make money one way or another, whether you hate him or not. So if you're going to boo him, he can make money off of that. And they booed him. And then we ended up not with Hollywood Rock, not with Corporate Rock. We ended up with a new iteration, a very strong, perhaps one of his best characters today, the final boss. Came out with the the uh, the Black Adam entrance with the lightning going in the background and the spotlight on him and then the transition from his babyface theme into the Hollywood Rock theme. Oh, Brahma Bull has red eyes. His entrance tonight was Chef's Kiss. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. And then you see him beating up Cody Rhodes, not just beating up, decimating him, telling Mama Rose, I'm going to put your son's blood on this belt and then give you the belt, and you're going to give it your tears. And then The Rock proceeded to do everything that he set out to do. Two weeks ago, beat up Cody Rhodes, drug him outside, busted him wide open, blood streaming out his face, one of the best Raws in years. Grabbed his blood, put it on the Mama Rose belt. And we all said, oh man, this is a new era. This is new. This is new. This ain't the same WWE. And then the very next week, what ended up happening? Cody tried to get his revenge. Nope. The Rock whooped his ass again. And then we got here tonight because everyone was saying, yeah, the hype is great. You can do all the shenanigans, all that bells and whistles crap, but eventually the bell's going to ring. Then what is The Rock going to do? Right? Eventually the bell is going to ring. So what do you think? The bell rung. Was it as bad as you were expecting? Where are those haters at now? Ladies and gentlemen, you know I keep it fair. And even though I have my own preferences, even though I have my own biases, you all know I do my best to give you a straightforward review, and I never lie to you. You know like I know that if a match sucks, no matter who's in it, I'll tell you that it sucks. When it comes to this match in particular, I had a feeling that this was going to surpass everyone's expectations. I was a little worried. I was a little worried about The Rock because I'm like, ooh, okay, 51 years old. Can he still go? He looked fantastic. At 51, whooped their candy asses, sold like a pro, took bumps like a pro. I loved it. He can still work. Man, he got in there and looked like a monster. He basically worked Hulk Hogan. He was Hulk Hogan from WrestleMania 18. He was the powerhouse tossing people around. I loved it, though. It looked good. He looked great. Was selling properly. Moved great. The match started off slow because it went 45 minutes, 44 Minutes and 30 seconds. The second longest match in WrestleMania history. 
But once it picked up, oh, it picked up. Because there was a point in the match where The Rock just said, screw it. Anything goes. Told the referee, don't you DQ me. Don't you count me out. Don't you do anything or you're fired. So it essentially turned into a tornado attack. It turned into a Texas tornado attack. Roman starts beating up Cody. Seth starts beating up Rock. They start using weapons. They start putting each other through tables. It just becomes chaos. And in my head, I'm like, why not just make it an anything goes Texas Tornado match? If that's what you were going to do, cool. Just start that off from the get-go. But okay. They go out into the crowd. Uh, they start really talking shit. You see Rock spitting water at Seth. And then Seth spits prime at the Rock. It was great. And so it just built and crescendoed and crescendoed to the ending where shit just got crazy. And you start seeing counters. You're seeing Cody hitting the the uh, crossroads. You're seeing Roman hit the spear. Uh, there was a point in the match where Cody... What is with Cody not hitting Roman with the Cody cutter? Because Cody could hit the Cody cutter just fine on the rock. But Roman... He botched both of Cody's. He got hit with two of them. And he botched both of them. It, it looked horrible. But Cody hit a sweet Cody cutter off the top against Roman. And then Seth followed up with the Frog Splash. That was nice. Love that double team. And then there was a point in the match where Cody was hooked in the guillotine. And then The Rock held Cody's legs on the outside where he couldn't move. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. And there was this one part in the match where The Rock just took his fist and bow! Punched Seth in the nuts. I was like, what the... This badass here, you just just punched him right in the nuts. That that's hilarious. That was just funny. He just pow right in the nuts. So he punched him in the nuts, and then it gets, then it starts getting crazy because now you start seeing uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth go to the announcers table, and then Cody puts the rock through the announcers table with the rock bottom, hits a rock bottom with the rock on it, and then Roman spears Seth through a barricade. The rock. Gets inside the ring, spine buster, goes through the people's elbow. In the middle of it, Cody gets up. Cody Cutter to counter it. Really, really good. So good. You see Seth selling his knee and his back because you know the story of him having knee injury, uh, knee injuries and a back, bad back. So he's selling that. Just good stuff all around. I love it. You love to see it. You love to see it. And then there was a spot during the match where, and this was one of my favorite near falls. So, Rock and Roman have Cody dead to rights. Roman goes for a spear. He goes to spear Cody. Seth intercepts. Intercepts Cody out of the way. Roman misses Cody and spears the Rock. Just straight up spears the Rock. And we're like, oh, shit. And so then Cody and Seth double team Roman Cody picks up Rock. Seth picks up Roman. They hit a double pedigree. Tribute to the game. And they pin him. One, two. And then The Rock kicks out. And Roman kicks out. I said. That was a crazy near fall. Love that near fall. Of course, the ending is. Roman, of course. Gets hit with not one, not two. Was going to be hit with a third crossroads. The Rock gets a belt and wham! Lashes Cody. Smacks him across the back with a belt. It was loud. Straight up crack. You hear a crack throughout the arena. Just straight up smacked his ass. It's crazy. And then Cody slumps down. Roman hits the spear. And then Roman tags in The Rock. And then The Rock stalked. Did the whole, the little stalking. Just, uh, And then he starts stalking him. And then he starts stalking him. And then Cody stands up. Boom, rock bottom. Oh, no, we're not done. Oh, we can't end it that way. You know what's coming next, right? People's elbow. But he doesn't do that because he did the, the, the elbow thing and threw it already. So instead, he just goes... Bloodline. Runs to the ropes. Hits the elbow. Boom. Pins Cody. One. Two.
two, three. Crowd boos. The Rock pins Cody Rhodes. Roman and Rock win on night one. And that means on night two, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get Bloodline Rules. Anything goes. This was the Infinity War, and I love that after Cody lost, they do the same shot they did last year when Cody lost to Roman. You see Cody sad face, and then in the corner you see in the Rock and Roman on the outside. Will the events re- will history repeat itself? So now Cody's going into a match down, disgruntled, thinking I might not win. I don't think I'm going to finish the story. Seth is looking distraught because I'm like. He's all like, man, I put my body and soul. Now I'm fucked up and battered. Now I got to face Drew McIntyre tomorrow. Fuck. Fuck. You know, Seth is like, fuck. Right? And so we see The Rock. We see Roman Reigns. The Rock, by the way, is carrying the People's Championship strap he got at the Hall of Fame from Muhammad Ali. He's carrying that around his shoulder. Roman's carrying the Undisputed Championship. Why does The Rock's belt look better than Roman's belt? Why? Why? Why y'all do that to Roman? Anyways, they get on the, the the apron. I mean, not the apron. The stage. Midway through. Roman raises the belt. The Rock raises his belt. Fireworks go off. And Cody is sitting there dis- disgruntled. And that's how we end the show. We end the show exactly how it should be ended. Cody defeated... He doesn't think he's going to win. So guess what's going to happen tomorrow? We just saw Infinity War. Thanos won. He snapped out half the universe. The the heroes, the Avengers are defeated. They're disgruntled. They've lost hope. So I guess that means Endgame is coming tomorrow. I'm excited. I'm excited about Endgame. This, this overall, again, tonight's show, this is just me, tonight's show I thought was good. It was a good show. It, it didn't feel like WrestleMania from the standpoint of not a lot happened. The only thing that you need to worry about is Sami Zayn beating Gunther and, of course, the tag match at the end. Everything else, eh, you can skip it. You can just read the results. I do recommend you go and watch it, though. But, like, honestly, just watch the last two matches and you're good. Overall show was good. Crowd was kind of... Again, we got to do something about the acoustics in this arena. Crowd sounded dead. They sounded dead. And it hurt the show. But I'm not too worried about it because we all know that the real WrestleMania is, well, tonight, because it's past midnight for me, but it's tomorrow for WrestleMania night two. <coughs> and, yeah, I feel like how I feel now, I'll feel differently, the complete opposite. Because we're going to get that beautiful moment where it's nostalgia, and it's going to be great. So, yeah, um... I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good overall wrestling night for WWE. Um, hopefully, they'll get better at the way they conclude these stories and they blow it off. Again, we need more work on Jimmy and Jay. We need more work on that. Um, hopefully, they got something planned for Damage Control because I got a feeling that Eel Sky is not winning that belt. Is not going to retain that belt tomorrow. Um, You know, hopefully they'll find an opponent for Rhea Ripley because she seems to be challengerless right now. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll figure out what, we'll see what they can do. But overall, I enjoyed myself. How did you feel about WrestleMania Night 1? Leave me your thoughts down below in the live chat. We are going to continue with the Super Chat Championship Night one edition. So I want to make this clear once again. If you donate the most tonight, that does not mean you've won the Super Chat Championship. It simply means this is part one. So whoever donates the most tonight will just be in the lead. 
and then your total will add up to tomorrow. So if you continue to donate throughout the throughout the weekend, you could end up being Super Chat Champion. Now, I noticed that Nickname Maya was not here tonight. I also noticed uh, a certain Franklin Torres was not here, and a Three Diglets was not here. I think all three of them are waiting till tomorrow to give their donations. But we still got two nights. I am going to go ahead and just play the Super Chats, and we will find out. We will crown a winner for night one, and then we'll see if that winner can maintain his lead going into night two. So, Super Chats, here we go. I need your love. It would be nice if starting next year moving forward, both nights of Mania feel like WrestleMania. Also, if I'm correct, the, the crowd wasn't shown that much during the matches. It was dark. Really? Yeah, I, I, it, it felt dreary. Like, it, even just watching, it felt like there, there wasn't much lighting. So if it was dark in the arena as well. Wow. <laughs> Long hair Rhea Ripley is sexy as hell and a 10 out of 10. That alone is one of my favorite parts of this WrestleMania weekend NGL. Fire, fire, fire. Fire! Yeah! I agree. I agree, sir. I 100% agree on that. She, she looked great with that dark hair. Uh, how did y'all feel about Rhea Ripley's dark her, her, her dark hair, if you will. The Glow EST Storm beat Damage Control. The Glow is Storm. Is that what we're calling it? I thought it was called the Big Three. Are y'all coming up with names for them? Look, if y'all want to come up with names for them, I'm not going to stop you. I'm cool with y'all calling them whatever you want. I just, you know... Once y'all know, they already have a name, and it's called the Big Three. Baby. The reason Jimmy have Jay for screwing him over was because he did not want Jay to become Roman. But then he joined Roman. That's what I'm talking about. It doesn't make sense. They had a storyline, they had a story threat, and then they just abandoned it for no reason. And so going into this match, the story was messy. And the match, although good, there wasn't much of a bite behind it because the story was lame. And so Jay just beat him. When they discussed the history of WM, you'd think VM didn't exist. He destroyed his legacy. They completely took him out. Vince does not exist anymore in the end of the busy. So Jermaine Watson Sr., you are currently in the lead with $20 for night one. He took the lead with $20. Oh, you're not going to be able to read this because of the cuss word? So, Telawanya, I swear, Dakota Kai is the female version of Dolph Ziggler. The woman can sell her ass off. Also, people were thirsting over her on X2. I was those, Bruh, did you not hear what I was saying? Bruh, she was fine. I agree with their sentiment. She was fine. Damn, bruh. Yeah, John B. II, I agree Dakota Kai was looking sexy as hell in that outfit, but everyone thought Roxanne Perez is your girl. Which one do you want? Um, I'll have both, thank you. I'll take them both. I'm hardcore. I'll take them both. All right, what y'all feel? Um, On a scale of 1 to 10, how y'all feel about WrestleMania Night 1? Give me your grades on a scale of 1 to 10. Just very curious to know how y'all feel about things. 
Phantasmo, The Rock putting on a very good performance. It's the best birthday present for me. Well, happy birthday, Phantasmo. Thank you for sharing your birthday, sharing your birthday with us, by the way. I hope you celebrated it well. Jimbo Jack says, Cody got booed. I think I heard some booing from Cody, from um, the Cody crybabies. No, I'm joking. Um, I did hear some boos in the crowd. I just chalked it up to Rock fans cheering on Rock, and then the Rock got booed somewhat too. So the, the crowd was going to be mixed regardless. I figured the crowd was going to be mixed because they had to be. You know what I mean? They were going to be mixed no matter how you, you view it. That's just what it is. The Usos match was a waste of time. Oh my god, y'all really did not like the Usos match. That's crazy to me. Uh oh. Hello? You guys hear me? You guys can hear me, right? All right, I think I think things froze up a little bit there. I apologize for that. I think we're okay. That was a little scary. Okay, good. Everything's everything's fine. Yeah, thank you for getting that troll. By the way, I appreciate. It. I hate when trolls get in here. <sighs> okay, that's good. Um, what was I talking about? All right, got a little scared there. I thought the stream froze up. All right, let me let me get your grades on a scale of one to ten. How you feel about WrestleMania? WrestleMania. The acoustics in the arena was not good. Yeah. I, I said that in my review. It just felt like the acoustic, the overall vibe of the show was off because you couldn't really hear the crowd because the dome was open. You know what I mean? Your goatness, Lauren Big says. The Rock showed you how our boss gets down. He talked the talk and walked the walk and backed it up. Thank you, your goatness, for your opinions. Yeah, like it, it, it was a phenomenal main event. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Is that who I think it is? Shucky ducky. Quack, quack. Everybody, take a second. Breathe it in. You are in the presence of greatness. Say hello to a family member. A and B Convos Wrestling Edition is in the his house. Welcome, ma'am and sirs. I appreciate you for joining us for this lovely, lovely evening. Buckle in. Night 2 is going to be a bumper ride. Like the video. Thank you so much. Yes, like the video. What's up? Three diggers is at WrestleMania. may not be in at all this weekend. It's fine with me. Hey, it's an easy defense for the Super Chat champion then. All he has to do is donate more than $20. Yeah, like y'all are outside, so it was gonna be hard to hear the crowd. Regardless, that's uh that's pretty pretty lame, man. Yeah, hopefully tomorrow won't be cold as it was today. Yeah, hopefully it will be a little bit warmer and you guys will be a little bit more excited. But yeah, like ugh. Again, like it, it kinda feel like the crowd wasn't there tonight. Leo does everything, says I was not a fan of the Usos match. It's a super kick fest the entire match. I just don't want to hear any discourse about the overuse of the names on both sides. The USO match was trash. Oh man. I don't think it I don't think the match was that bad. I just think the story is off. JJ Bulldog says I have no idea how cold it was. I think Michael Cole said it was 50 degrees, but it felt like 47. Oh. Oh. Oh, God damn it. In April? This is springtime. You would think it wouldn't feel that way. Man. 
Page Enthusiast says, NXT Stand Deliver was a better wrestling night than WrestleMania Night 1. Overall, yes. I do feel like, I can't believe I'm saying that. Stand Deliver had better wrestling than Night 1. I do agree with that. I did see the show. Um, I thought the North American Triple Threat, North American Championship Triple, triple Threat with Obi Fima. With uh, Oba Femi. Oh, it's Obi Fima. It's Oba Femi, right? Oba Femi and Josh Briggs and Donovan Dijak. Yes, those three. They stole the show. That was a fantastic big man match. I loved Roxanne. Lyra Valkyrie. Lyra Valkyrie, too. That was a great match as well. But Roxanne, um, as great as she was, and fuck, she's hot. I don't know what it is about these heels, man. I know uh, the Alpha Dogs. Is that what they're called? The Alpha Dogs? Uh, Baron Corbin and uh, Braun Breaker retain their titles. And, uh, yeah, um, they're introducing a new North American women's title, a mid-card title for the women on NXT. Uh, the main event was Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, the first ever all-black main event for NXT in front of their largest audience. I, I thought Trick and Carmelo had an awesome match, but it felt short. It felt like they just kind of ended it. Kind of wanted a little more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, a and B Combo said the Usos match. Let me read this. Usos match was a super kick fast, and that's about it. Boo. Oh, a and B Combos didn't like the match either. Wow. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm too nice. Maybe I'm being too nice on it. How did I feel about Julia showing up at NXT? I did see Julia. I'm hearing that they're not going to change her style at all. They're going to let her be stiff as fuck. Okay, let's see how that works out. Let's see how that works out. Hopefully it works out better for her. Jimmy is not good as a solo act as he is with Jay. As he is with a tag. Jimmy is not good as a solo. He needs to reunite with Jay. Jay's too over right now to go back to a tag team. Imagine the pop for Trick Williams if him and Carmelo Hayes had their match. Oh, yeah. The, the Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams match feel like a WrestleMania feud for me. You know what I mean? Uh, the whiskey vibe. I'm telling you, Alex, it should be spring, but being in there, it was really cold. Hopefully tomorrow it will be better. Me too. Crazy cold. Man, people were saying they did not like that Uso match. I mean, y'all have a right to say it. I feel differently, though. Just a tad bit different. Y'all, I'll tell you what. It is late. So we're going to conclude tonight's Super Chat Championship Round 1 with... Who, who was it that donated $20? The winner of tonight's Super Chat Championship is Jermaine Watson Sr., who wins with $20. So the most person, the most that was donated tonight was $20. So I'm assuming uh, the reason why, as they said, we didn't see the, the back and forth between Nickname Mai and Three Diglets and Franklin Torres is simply because, well... They're all saving their money for tomorrow. Night two. Well, if that's the case, then this was a very... It was appropriate. Like, the donations match the, the feeling of the show. As I said before, this feels like the pre-WrestleMania to the real WrestleMania. I, I do believe that when we get to night two, things are going to pick up. I think this is when we'll get the, the other big moments. I'm not saying tonight's show was bad. I just kind of feel like it didn't... I just felt like it was off. It didn't feel like WrestleMania. It felt like a setup to the real WrestleMania, which is tomorrow night, which I'm looking forward to. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. And you will see me back here tomorrow night for my review of WrestleMania Night 2. Night 2. So in the meantime, I do appreciate you all for being here. Thank you for watching. As you file out through all the YouTube things, like the video, subscribe, and click that bell to catch all my content when it comes out. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Donate, PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, Venmo, Aura.
get you Aura. Two-week free trial of Identity Debt Protection. Leave a comment. Join the Discord. Subscribe to A&B Combos. Go watch their reactions. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm very grateful to have you guys here. I hope to see you tomorrow night for more WrestleMania chat. As always, you are welcomed right here in Alex's world. The place that is, was, and forever, forever, ever, forever will be a safe space for wrestling fans like you. See you all tomorrow for part two, where the end game should be fun. Peace. Oh, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're.